Hi there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Shelby and today is the start of another reading vlog. Today is Wednesday, June 12th and it's the start of the Buzzword Readathon. It's taking place from today the 12th until next Tuesday the 18th. And the buzzword this round is you and I have quite a few books on my TBR that I want to read. I did make a whole separate video talking about the books I plan to read. I will link that down below if you're interested in seeing it. And I will also link the two hosts that are hosting this round down below as well. It's about 3.30 now so I haven't done any updating yet today but I have been pretty busy just doing some organizing in my house and taking care of Avery so haven't had a chance to update but I have done a ton of reading today, so that's a plus. The first book I read, I actually forgot to mention in my TBR video. I have it out from the library and I realized it would have worked for this readathon, so I kind of kept it in the hopes that I would read it this week, and so I picked it up first thing this morning. And that is Lies You Never Told Me by Jennifer Donaldson. And this is a YA mystery thriller, which I don't read a lot of YA, but I've heard great things about this book. And it's about four different characters named Elise, Gabe, Catherine, and Sasha. Elise is a 15 year old girl who lives in Portland, Oregon, and she is in the theater program and just gets the lead as Juliet in her school's play of Romeo and Juliet. And she has a crush on her theater teacher and you kind of follow that storyline of her getting into some bad water. And the second storyline is in Texas of the remaining three characters, Gabe, Catherine, and Sasha. So Gabe and Sasha are a thing, they're a couple, but Gabe doesn't really wanna date Sasha anymore so he breaks up with her and she doesn't take it too well and she kind of does these things that are pretty inappropriate to try and get him back. Whereas Gabe starts taking notice of the new girl named Catherine. She's new to town, she's pretty quiet and you can tell something is just off about her and her home life but her and Gabe kind of start up this romance and this was, like I said, a mystery thriller kind of book. It read really fast. I guess the big twist before the halfway point. So I was a little bummed out that that was the big reveal and that I guessed it. Um, so it kind of ruined that aspect for me. But I do have to take into account that this is a YA book and I'm not the intended audience of the book. I did enjoy it, but it definitely is not a new favorite thriller. So I ended up giving this one three stars. And I was able to pick up a second book and I'm halfway through it now. And that is I Found You by Lisa Jewell. I've read two other Lisa Jewell books and one of them would actually work for this readathon called Watching You. And I enjoyed the other two books I read by her. I liked Watching You better than Girls in the Garden, but I thought they were both pretty good. I think I gave one three and a half stars and one four stars. And this one is another kind of mystery suspense book. She writes really slow atmospheric kind of stories and they're not super fast paced thrillers. They kind of slow burn and then you put all the pieces together and everything comes together at the end. And I can definitely tell that's what's happening in this book. It's pretty slow and it's following three different storylines and you know that they're gonna connect somehow. So it follows this single mother named Alice. She lives on the coast and she lives there with her three kids and she's a single mom like I said and one day she finds a man. He is on the shore and he has no idea who he is, where he came from and he has no memory and she decides to let him stay in her like pool house and kind of let him stay at her house which is kind of odd. She doesn't know him but they form this friendship and trying to put together maybe where he is from. We're following another storyline of a young woman named Lily who just moved from Ukraine to the UK. She got married, but one night, like 10 days after she gets married, her husband does not come home and she reports him missing. And when they look into him, they realize that his passport is fake and he is not who he says he is. And so she's wondering like, who did I marry? And then the third storyline takes place in 1993, over 20 years previously. And it's about these two siblings named Gray and Kirsty, And they are vacationing on this coastal town with their parents, I think for the summer, and it's the same town that Alice lives in. And so it's 20 years earlier, and they have this summer there on the coast, and they meet this guy named Mark, and he's a little shady, and he's older than Kirsty, but he takes interest in her, and you're kind of following that storyline, and so you're kind of wondering how the three storylines will connect. Is this nameless man one of these other guys? Is he not? How are any of them related? So like I said, I'm about halfway through, so I'm kind of curious how the stories connect. 
right now if I were to rate it I'd probably give it a three and a half star but maybe there will be some big twist that surprises me I don't know but so far I'm enjoying it and I will come back and update you guys once I finish it it's a few hours later it's about 8 p.m. and I ended up finishing I found you by Lisa Jewell and I ended up really liking this book it was slow for the first half of it because it followed three different storylines and Lisa Jewell is just kind of setting up each storyline and then once we started putting the pieces together that's when everything picked up and I really could not put this one down. And I've noticed with Lisa Jewell's books is they're definitely more of a slower burn mystery and some people really love that some people don't and I really like that. I think this one is my second favorite of hers that I've read. I think my least favorite which I still enjoyed was The Girls in the Garden and then my most favorite was Watching You. And then this one landed somewhere kind of in the middle. I ended up giving this one four stars. I think I would have given it higher star rating if it wasn't so slow in the beginning because it did start to pick up and I loved the twists and the turns and kind of how the three stories collided in it, but it just was a little too slow for me in the beginning. And for that reason, I ended up giving it four stars. But I am really glad that I picked it up. It's just been sitting on my shelves for months and I don't really know what took me so long to get to it, but I'm so glad that I finally did. And then next I think I'm gonna pick up How I Lost You by Jenny Blackhurst. And I've never read anything by this author before and I believe this one is her debut novel and she's had several others published since. But this one is a crime thriller, crime novel, and it's about a woman who has murdered her child, her baby, three years ago and ever since she's been institutionalized in a psychiatric ward to be treated for that and now she's released and has a new name is kind of in witness protection and she moves on with her life but then she gets a letter addressed to her old name where she lives currently and there's a picture of a child that is claiming to be the baby that she killed and now she's wondering did she actually kill her baby and is everything what she thought it was the last three years. So I've heard great things about this author and this book in particular, and I don't remember what made me pick it up. I just picked it up kind of on a whim last year, and it's been sitting on my shelves, and I was kind of quickly browsing my shelves a little bit earlier and saw this one had the title You in it. And yeah, I'm kind of intrigued about this synopsis. So I'm gonna make some progress into this and then I will update you guys later. It's already 8 p.m. so I don't think I'll be doing any more updating tonight, but I will tomorrow morning. Hi guys, so it's day two of the Buzzword Readathon. Sorry it's taking me so long to update you guys. I haven't really had a chance yet today. To be honest, I've had a pretty rough day emotionally. It just has not been a fabulous day for me. I'm just having a hard time. I don't know if you guys really know this about me, but to have my daughter Avery, I went through a lot of fertility problems and I have primary infertility and was on a lot of fertility medication prior to having Avery. And I was told because I don't ovulate that I have to be on fertility medication, but that if I have a baby, it might clear itself up. And so after having Avery, I was hoping that my fertility would kind of even out. I didn't breastfeed, so my cycle came back right away. And my husband and I actually started trying to have a baby again back in December um, because we want our kids closer in age and we knew it would probably take us a while to have a baby. And it's been about seven months, which is not alarming at all, but I'm starting to have symptoms again that I'm not ovulating at all. And I'm probably gonna have to go back to see a fertility specialist and be on fertility medication again. And for me, that's just like really hard to handle emotionally. Um, I was hoping that my body would just kind of go back to normal and I wouldn't have to go down the same road because prior to having Avery, um, I had miscarriages and it was just a really hard road to go down. And I was hoping I just wouldn't have to go down that road. I was accepting that I would have to wait months to get pregnant. I thought, you know, like every other person, it might take a while, but I'm starting to have symptoms without going into too much detail that that's not the case, that my body is not working at a normal functioning way and that I need medical intervention um, to even have normal cycles with ovulation. So um, it's just been a kind of a hard day to, I don't know, think, of, think about that and 
know that at 25 years old I'm dealing with that um, when most people don't even start to deal with infertility until they're in their late 30s if ever so it's just it's hard and I don't really talk about that a lot on this channel just because I don't know if my viewers are interested in hearing about that you guys are here for books and that's definitely more personal and family based um, but if I just seem a little off that's why it's just been a really tough day but with that said, I have gotten a lot of reading done. Last night I only read about 20 pages and I picked up How I Lost You by Jenny Blackhurst and I ended up finishing this today. And it was a pretty quick read. It was a little over 300 pages. And I was really excited for this because the synopsis, like I said yesterday, sounded so good. It's about a woman named Susan who three years ago, she murdered her baby and they thought it was because of postpartum psychosis and so she gets sent to a psychiatric facility for those three years and now she's released um, on compassionate release and she's chosen to change her name yesterday i said she's in witness protection she's not she chose to change her name and get a fresh start and she receives a package with a photo of her son stating it's his, her son and it makes her question the last three years and we follow her currently, but we also follow a second timeline. The second timeline is a group of guys in college and they're kind of getting into trouble and their friendship is kind of interesting. And you're wondering how the two timelines intersect and they finally do come together. Um, all the pieces start to come together. And this book just didn't quite work for me. I found that the main character Susan's timeline was rather lengthy and drawn out. There's a ton of characters and a lot of them you didn't really learn anything about them so I felt like they were irrelevant and then I didn't care about the past timeline so when the twist came I didn't really care and so overall this one just didn't really work for me I gave it two and a half stars but um, I will give this author another chance sometime because it was her debut crime thriller so maybe I'll read another one and then I ended up picking up another book and I'm really excited about this one because it's a buddy read with my girl Beth over at Beth and the books I will link her channel below we chose to do a buddy read for this because she has a copy of this on her Kindle and I do as well it's on Kindle Unlimited if you subscribe to that but I have a physical copy and it's called I am watching you by Teresa Driscoll and this one's a thriller about a girl that goes missing um, a year ago and there's a cast of characters you're following who know something about what happened to her so there's a witness who saw her and her friend on the train and before she disappears and then we're following the victim's father as well as her best friend that was on the train with her and you're kind of putting all the pieces together and a private investigator that is investigating what happened and I'm only about I think a little over a hundred pages in and it's about 280 pages so I'm a little over a third of the way finished and right now you haven't learned a ton about each character in each storyline because there are so many people um, it is a little confusing but I think it has some promise it hasn't really picked up too much yet um, so I've heard good things about it from people on YouTube, but then when I went on Goodreads and looked at my friends' ratings, they all gave it like three, three and a half stars. They thought it was just okay. So I'm hoping it gets better for me. Um, I think Beth is kind of feeling the same way. She's a little bit less the way through, but I think she's like, oh, it's like pretty good. So we'll see how that one goes. I will get to the halfway point tonight because Beth and I decided to read like 150 pages the first day and then the remainder tomorrow. So I'm gonna try and finish this uh, portion tonight and then I will update you guys either later tonight or tomorrow. <music> Okay, so it is now day three of Buzzword Readathon, and it is about 11:30. And I did get some more reading done last night as well as this morning. I mostly got reading done this morning. I only read a little bit more of my book last night, about 50 pages. So now I'm about halfway, a little over halfway for I Am Watching You by Teresa Driscoll. And my opinions haven't really changed about it since I last updated to you guys about 50 more pages in. I am not loving all the different perspectives and the author is alluding that each character is having some secrets and that those secrets maybe can reveal what happened to the missing girl, Anna. And there's also a new perspective of a stalker that is watching these people or watching someone. They haven't said who they're watching or who they are. 
and it just seems a little cheesy um they just are alluding that they are stalking people and that is basically it so far so not a whole lot has happened in regard to what happened a year ago i'm hoping it picks up more but i don't know i don't have super high hopes for it i have not had the best of luck yet this readathon but i'm hoping it picks up a little bit more so i'll let you guys know once i get a little bit further and then this morning i picked up another book i chose sophie kinsella's i've got your number i've had this on my shelves for years and i did try to read it a few years ago and i think i only got like 20 pages in and so i just kind of nicked finishing it and it's just been sitting on my shelves so I picked it back up this morning and I'm about 220 pages in, so I'm halfway through the book. It's pretty long, but it's a pretty fast read. So it's like 450 pages, but the text isn't that large. And this is a chiclet romance novel. This is about our main character who is recently engaged and her engagement ring is a family heirloom. And she accidentally loses it and she's losing her mind trying to find this family heirloom engagement ring. And then while she's looking for it, someone steals her cell phone. So she's really having a bad day. And she just so happened finds a cell phone in the garbage and she takes it and says, okay, well, I will use this now. She gives the cell phone number to everyone at the hotel to try and find her ring. And she discovers this cell phone belonged to a personal assistant to a guy named Sam and he works for this big company and they start having this banter back and forth on the cell phone and she agrees to do some of the PA work for him if he lets her use this company phone um, because the PA basically quit and threw the phone in the garbage and that's how she ended up with it. So they start having this banter and back and forth and it's good so far, not a lot of romance has happened and I feel like our main character, her name, Poppy, I feel like she's a bit of a doormat and I think the author is alluding to that and so is Sam and so I'm hoping that she becomes more confident and not so much of a doormat because I hate seeing that, that people are just walking all over her and I hope there's more romance because right now there hasn't been much romance, it's more just a kind of funny witty story and I do like Sophie Kinsella's writing but I would say this is not one of my favorites of hers but I have high hopes that by the end it'll wrap up really good. So I will update you guys once I finish this and once I make more progress in I Am Watching You by Teresa Driscoll. Hey guys, welcome back. So it's the next day. It is day four of the Buzzword Readathon and I didn't get a chance to update you guys last night. Avery ended up going to bed really early and I didn't really want to wake her up so I didn't film last night but I did finish two books yesterday the first one I finished was my buddy read with Beth and it's called I'm watching you by Teresa Driscoll last time I updated you guys I think I was about halfway through and I was still kind of unsure about how I felt it was a little slow there was a lot of characters and that's exactly how I felt throughout the whole thing I was pretty disappointed in this book that I didn't really like the reveal at the end and we did get kind of a surprising twist but it kind of wrapped up really quickly and I don't know I just felt like some of the characters in here were really irrelevant and it was slow and yeah just really lackluster for me and I think Beth felt the exact same way and this one I ended up giving two and a half stars so I'm definitely gonna unhaul this one but I'm glad I gave it a read because I'd heard so much about it the next one I finished is I've Got Your Number by Sophie Kinsella. Again, this one's been on my shelves forever, so I'm really glad that I got to it. This one is pretty long. It's over 400 pages for a chiclet. That's pretty long. And even though I thought the first half was really slow, it did pick up, and I loved the ending. It was just so cute, and I think that made me just really like the book. And I thought it was pretty funny, especially some of the situations the main character gets herself into. And the romance between her and the leading guy was cute. Um, it's not a hardcore romance, it's more just like a chick lit rom-com type of book. And it was really cute, I ended up giving this one four stars. And then currently I am reading an arc for Don't You Forget About Me, and I can't really remember the author's name, but I'll have a picture of it here. And this one is about a girl who just lost her job as a waitress. She's 30 years old and she works at this really terrible Italian restaurant and she just lost her job 
and then she comes home and discovers her boyfriend is cheating on her and so she's kind of having a bad day so she loses her job and loses her boyfriend all in one day and luckily she gets this opportunity to work one night as a bartender to make some extra cash and it's at a wake for a funeral and when she's there she happens to see someone that she knew from like 15 years earlier and it's this guy from high school that she had a flame with and he's kind of the one that got away and she's never forgotten about him and now he is back and he doesn't even remember who she is so she's pretty shocked he has no idea who she is and a little offended and that's kind of where we are right now i'm about 40 something percent the way in and I'm enjoying it um it's just a nice chiclet romantic comedy type of book as well this one definitely has some comedy in it and it's cute and I think this cover is what really drew me to it I just love these um drawn covers I think they're so cute so I will read more of that one I do have my friend's bridal shower today so that will take up a good portion of my afternoon but I'm hoping to get some more reading done prior to that so I will update you guys once I make more headway in this book. So it's a bit later, it's about 9 p.m., a little later than I was expecting to update you guys, but time just got away from me. I was at my friend's bridal shower this afternoon and I had a lot of fun. I'm one of her bridesmaids and so I went over early and helped set up and it was a really cute shower. It was Disney themed. My friend loves Disney. She's doing her bachelorette weekend in Disneyland. And so the whole shower was Disney themed and we had to wear these little tiaras and I have a couple pictures so I'll try to include a couple over here and we just had a really good time. So it was a good day. I'm really tired though because I'm not used to socializing with such big groups of people because I am just a stay at home mom. So it just took a lot out of me. So I'm pretty tired, but I did get a little bit more reading done tonight. I didn't really read too much since I last updated you um, until tonight. And so I ended up reading up until 75% of Don't You Forget About Me. And last time I checked in, I think I was about 40% through. And the romance has not been there at all. It's a chick lit book and it just focuses on a lot of side dramas with the main character's life with her family and with her job and things. But we're three quarters of the way through and the romance between her and Lucas is just not there. And so I'm a little disappointed in that considering I thought this was a romance, but it seems to be more of like a women's fiction chiclet with a very slight romance. Um, I can say that I really like the writing of the author in regard to the comedy aspect. There is a lot of comedic parts to it, very humorous. But the writing is a little off in regard to how it's written. The um, dialogue between the characters is really casual and even includes like lol like ha ha ha. It's just kind of odd. And But then the rest of the writing is more formal. So it's just a weird dynamic. So I'm not loving this one. Uh, right now if I had to rate it I would probably give it three stars. Just because the romance isn't there and like I said the writing. But I'm hoping it gets a little bit better at the end and it makes me like it more because an ending to a book can make it or break it so we will see I have not had the best of luck this week in regard to reading I've just been picking up some random stuff but this one has been on my list of something I want to read and need to read I think it comes out in September so yeah hopefully it gets better we'll see and I don't think I'm gonna update any more tonight I'm kind of tired going to read a little bit more and go to bed and I will update you guys tomorrow when I finish this book <music> Okay, so it's the next day. It is day number five of the Buzzword Readathon, and it's about 10:30 in the morning. And I ended up finishing Don't You Forget About Me. And I was not in love with this book. I think I was a little misled by the synopsis and the cover. Based on the cover, I thought it was going to be a romance between Lucas and Georgina, but it ended up being more of a coming-of-age story for Georgina and not so much a romance. There was a little bit of romance towards the very end, but it was pretty lackluster in my opinion. But like I said, it was more of a coming of age story for this 30 year old woman named Georgina. And I did like elements of it and the humor within the book I really enjoyed, but I didn't love this story and it was kind of a miss for me. 
and for that reason I ended up giving this one three stars. So since I've been in kind of a reading slump with these books this week, I decided to pick up one that I thought I was going to love because I've heard amazing things about it, and that is Everything You Want Me To Be by Mindy Mejia. And this one is a thriller crime novel, and I'm about a third of the way through, and I'm really enjoying it, and it's making me feel a lot better about the books I've been reading this week. And this is about a girl who goes missing. Her name is Hattie, and she's a senior in high school, and you know that she's kind of run away from home on a Friday night and by Monday morning the police find her body and she's dead. And you know that she's murdered, she's stabbed to death. And so you're kind of wondering what happened to her um, on the night that she died. And you go back about nine or ten months earlier and kind of see events that lead up to her disappearance and her death. And you also see currently through the eyes of the sheriff, his name is Dell. And you see him investigating Hattie's death and her murder and kind of interviewing everyone in their small town in Minnesota. And it just jumps back in perspectives through several people, past and present. And so far, I'm really liking this book. I love the mystery element to it. And I like the sheriff and his perspective. And I'm also very curious about the troubles that Hattie gets herself into. And so this one I'm really liking. I've never read anything by Mindy Mejia before, but I've heard good things about this one and I'm so happy that I've been enjoying it. I'm going to read more of this and then I will get back to you guys once I make more headway. And then on another note, it is Father's Day today, so my husband and daughter and I were all going to go out to lunch and kind of enjoy our day. I think for dinner we're going to have some steaks because my husband loves steak and today is about him, so we're gonna do that. And yeah, I will come back later to update you guys. So it's definitely a few hours later, it's after 6 p.m. and I've had such a good day with my husband and Avery in regard to Father's Day. So we've just been enjoying our time together and she's down for a nap now. So I got a little bit more reading done. I just filmed a couple of videos, hence all the makeup. And I am now halfway done with Everything You Want Me To Be by Minnie Mejia, and I'm really loving this book. I love the way it's written, and I love the mystery element to it, and I love murder mystery type of books. And like I said, this is about the disappearance and murder of a teenage girl named Hattie, and she's basically murdered in April. We're seeing the perspective currently through Dell, the local sheriff, in April, and then we're rewinding all the way back to the summer and fall before through Hattie's eyes as well as another character's eyes and seeing the events that lead up to her disappearance and her death. And we've gotten about halfway to April and seeing kind of the events that transpire and it is just so good I'm loving the mystery to this and I like that I do not know at all who could have been the cause of her death and her disappearance and just the things that she gets herself into are pretty interesting and she's not the really good and innocent teen that everyone thinks she is and she definitely has been getting herself into some serious trouble and I just can't wait to see how this concludes. Like I said, I'm halfway through and I assume I will finish it either tonight or tomorrow morning. And so when I do, I will come back and update you guys. Okay, so it's the next day. I didn't end up reading any more last night, but I did end up finishing my book this morning and that is Everything You Want Me To Be by Minnie Mejia. <laughs> And I really, really liked this one. I thought it was really well done. And I just love the dual timelines. Everything about this I just really enjoyed. And I couldn't really guess the big reveal and the ending. And I just think Mindy Mejia did a really great job with her execution of this book. Sorry for the noise. Avery's playing in her high chair. But yeah, I really enjoyed this one. And I ended up giving it four and a half stars. And if you like crime thrillers, I would so recommend this one. Okay, so it's now definitely a few hours later. It is 8 p.m. and this will be my final check-in for today. And I am also reading for another readathon called Romanceathon, and that is overlapping for two days with the buzzword readathon. So I did read a book for that today, so I didn't get to pick up another book for the buzzword readathon until this evening. And I chose one I got from the library and I heard this as a recommendation from Jacqueline over at We Be Bookin'. I don't think she read this book, but she read this author and I never heard of her before. And this one just so happened to have the word you in the title. And it's called You Can Trust Me by Sophie McKenzie and this is a mystery thriller novel. This is about a woman named Livy who I think is like 38 years old and she has a best friend named Julia 
and Julia commits suicide. She walks into her friend's apartment, her friend is dead, and everyone rolls it a suicide, but Liv is convinced that her friend did not commit suicide, and no one believes her. Everyone thinks that Julia committed suicide but Livy and Julia's boyfriend. This makes Livy really think about what happened 18 years earlier when her sister was murdered and her sister and Julia were best friends and that's how Julia and Livy became friends as they bonded over Livy's sister's death and she's thinking that whoever killed her best friend also killed her sister 18 years earlier but again no one really believes her. It's kind of wondering who she can trust and what the deal is about all of it and right now I'm about 120 pages in and there's about 320 pages so I have a couple hundred pages left and so far it is okay it is pretty slow going in my opinion it's very wordy and I'm not loving it and I don't know it just seems a little far-fetched there's these chapters as well in there from a sociopath who you know clearly killed both the people and you're wondering who that is um, but clearly they aren't naming themselves so I find that kind of interesting and a little gory in sections but again it's just overall a little bit on the slow side so I will continue reading this and then once I make more progress I will update you guys tomorrow <music> Okay, so it is the final day of the Buzzword Readathon. It is day number seven. It's Tuesday the 18th, and I have finished my eighth and final book for the Readathon. It's about 12 p.m., and I just finished You Can Trust Me by Sophie McKenzie. And last time I updated, I was about a third of the way through, and so I ended up just finishing this one this morning. Um, I was up a little bit early, so I had some time. And this one, like I was saying, is a mystery about a woman named Livy whose best friend, Julie supposedly commit suicide but she believes that her friend was murdered and that it could be linked to the murder of her younger sister Kara that was murdered 18 years ago and she's on this wild goose chase to try and track down who the murderer is and this I found to be really long-winded and pretty slow and pretty wordy so it was not a favorite for me and I did guess who the killer was about halfway through and I to me it was pretty obvious but didn't love this one and I ended up giving it three stars but I will try this author again in the future because I do think she has some promise. Even though it is only noon and I still have more time left in the day I don't see myself completing another you book especially because I'm also participating in the romance-a-thon so I think I'm just gonna cut the vlog off here and give you guys a summary of all the ratings and all the books that I read and I will link them all down below as well but I'm gonna quickly go through them. The first book that I read is Lies You Never Told Me by Jennifer Donaldson and I gave this one three stars. The second book that I read is I Found You by Lisa Jewell and I gave this one four stars. The third one I read is How I Lost You by Jenny Blackhurst and I gave this one two and a half stars. The next book that I read is I Am Watching You by Teresa Driscoll and I gave this one two and a half stars. The next book that I read is I've Got Your Number by Sophie Kinsella and I gave this one four stars. The next book that I read is Don't You Forget About Me and I gave this one three stars. The next book that I read is Everything You Want Me To Be by Mindy Mejia and I gave this one four and a half stars. The last book that I read is You Can Trust Me by Sophie McKenzie and I gave this one three stars. So like I said, I did read a total of eight books for this readathon. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I will, like I said, link all these books as well as the host for the readathon and I will see you guys on my next one. Bye.